So song number four, Rise Again, ends you know, kind of like a ballad, a nice soft ending. Kind of hear the beach rolling away, some nice bass harmonics. The minute you kind of get lulled away, bang. Song number five, Window Pains, comes in. It's one of those one, two, three, bam, and in, into it we go. Heavy driving rhythm, really cool offbeat China kind of thing going in. One of the best things about this song that I like is the verses are nice and smooth. We, we tried to, in everything that we do, try to, you know, we're incorporating the groove, dynamics, smoothness, just feeling good with the song, you know, something that anybody can just tap their foot. But that song right there, nice, strong, strong song, great lead playing, and uh, perfect for coming out of a nice slow ballad to really kind of catch the listener kind of dozing off a little bit and kind of getting too relaxed. From there, we go into a song called Runaway. And as much as most people would probably think that, oh, Mark likes the intro because it's a drum intro the best, it's not true. The, my favorite part on this song is the verse patterns. It's a double pot hi-hat kind of thing uh, with a nice smooth kind of R&B thing happening. Ray falls right into it. Great vocal performance and really captures the essence of the song. Another song, great hooky chorus, something memorable. Someone should be able to hear this one time and, you know, have it down and just really remember that song. Great toe tapping song. Song number seven is probably Ray's favorite. I don't want to speak for Ray, but he, he's mentioned it a couple of times. It's a song called Stranded. Kind of has this island vibe in the beginning. Um, I'm playing an electronic drum kit to kind of create those kind of sounds. Kicks into the really driving, nice ball power ballad type chorus. Comes back out dynamically, nice and smooth. And one of the coolest parts about the song is the very end. I'm not going to say it's Freebird, but it kind of goes into that thing where all of a sudden you have this nice ballad and then the end comes and it starts really rocking out. It kind of sets up with about a 16 bar accents and different things and then just kicks into a driving groove where racing in a repetitive line over and over just driving the song home. So that's going to be a really fun one to play live. Um, I think that's definitely going to get people off their seats. Song number eight called At the Water's Edge, which is kind of interesting because this one almost didn't make the record. Not because we didn't like it or we didn't think it was worth it. It was kind of getting down to that time of like, okay, uh, we need to turn the record in. What are we going to be able to do? Uh, this is actually one of the first songs that Viv and I wrote that we put together. So it was interesting how Ray came in, took his interpretation to it. Uh, and he, he's done this quite a few times on a lot of these songs. I, I kind of come from a school of, okay, courses are heavy and big and grandiose but the verses are kind of mellow. He's done it a couple of times where he kind of flipped it. So he comes right in where I thought a verse was, he comes right in singing, I'm, I'm sorry, he comes in where I thought the chorus should start on the heavier part, but he's singing the verse, and then when the verse kind of drops down, he's singing this beautiful chorus with the harmonies and melodies, and it's just, it's, it's great. I, I love music where other people bring things to what we're doing that catch you totally off guard. Uh, and and he, he did it the whole record is actually what he did. I mean, all these guys did um, just some really, really beautiful playing on, these, on this record.